Manara. Milo Manara learned his trade in Italy in the 60s. Manara declares himself a disciple of Mobius, Hugo Pratt, and Federico Fellini. Has the ability to criticize and provoke. Through his work, Milo Manara speaks out against hypocrisy, oppression, and the alienation of the rights and desires of the individual. Eroticism and adventure. From a graphical point of view, I think that I was mainly influenced by Möbius. Whereas from a cultural and general point of view, I think it was especially Hugo Pratt who taught me how to approach comics. Narrating, adventures, how to tell the story, how to divide a story into small squares. On the other hand, it was Möbius who showed me the way of working which was closest to my own, to the one I was seeking. I had always had a certain ideological interest. Perhaps at the beginning it was even greater. In 1968 I was studying at the University of Venice in the Faculty of Architecture, one of the most rebellious and most active universities around at the time. In my first comics, for example, Yolanda, it was impossible to include my own ideology because it was merely a commercial operation which allowed me to start learning. But as soon as I had the chance to do more independent and more creative work, I also introduced my own personality, what I thought, my beliefs. Casterman, the French publishers, wanted to publish Lo Chimiotto, but it had already been bought by the French publisher Dargo. Then, during a meal at which both the editor of Casterman, Hugo Pratt, and myself were present, Pratt said, he's not going to give you Lo Chimiotto, but he can take another story. So, I said, I didn't have another story ready. But you can come up with a new one, Pratt said. And that's how he convinced me to write my own story. He said an author should write his own story because a comic is both a story and drawings, not just drawings. As long as you draw other people's stories, you'll always be incomplete. That's how he convinced me that I should draw. And in fact, the first story tells a lot about the convictions Pratt had about me. Pratt, in fact, took on the role of teacher to guide me into the mysteries of writing and making up stories. I had never managed to create a really great story, so I wrote about the problems I met with while attempting to live that great adventure.
Giuseppe Bergman is a fantastic extension of my personality in the same way as Scotla Maltesi is an extension of Hugo Pratt's, but it still remains a drawing in its own right. In fact, in the first Giuseppe Bergman story, my task was to actually take apart the structure of the comic script. On the other hand, in the second book, I wanted to have more fun with the drawings, to find out whether they were characters or just drawings. When I did the Giuseppe Bergman comic, I already had the idea of a trilogy. The first book was essentially a sort of analysis, not very serious, of adventure stories. The second was also an analysis, and also not very serious, of drawing from the artist's point of view, of sketching an adventure. In fact, I changed styles frequently in the second book. The third book was supposed to be the summing up of everything and to see how far my first experiences had got me. That's where the three levels the story breaks up into come from. I even decided to go to India take pictures, make a video, and a tape to go with the book. It's being produced now. So the films that appear in the story really exist, because I made them myself. That's why you have this linkage of fiction coming from a reality. It's more solid than that of the other stories, because I filmed it. I made it on location. The Middle Ages is a period which everybody defines as being dark, not very well known. Not much is said about it in history books. In Europe, we have amazing testimonies about monasteries built on the tops of mountains, for example, Meteora in Greece. At the same time, you have them spread out all over Europe, showing that our people are not nearly as rational as they seem. I took this video and set up as the main character, a mysterious medieval knight, treating it in a somewhat pre-Raphaelite way, to see what this European who...